last session we talked about sympathetic vibratory physics, vibration, what the preceding vibratory force is prior to resonance. Um, we were getting ready to discuss a little bit about Keeley and what he envisioned for machinery for mankind. Would you like to expound on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, Keeley worked with uh, the mind force, which we call scalar forces, <clears throat> and he designed all these machines to operate on that basis. And because of that, we were not able to understand his machinery from the scant literature that we have. It's only after many years of research that that has become obvious. That's what he did. <clears throat> and, and his main machines all operated on the basis of these scalar forces. And <clears throat> what is of interest uh, to a wide audience is the, the scalar forces are the mind forces, the mm -hmm. so-called spiritual forces. And it's unfortunate that that word, spiritual, has such a connotation to so many people because they shy away from it. But all spiritual things come from the mind forces, from consciousness and awareness. And the implications of that, of his science, what he was bringing forward, was that man, <clears throat> as an entity, as a spiritual, mental, biological entity, has access to immense powers. And <clears throat> it's also unfortunate that parallel to that, there were forces in society, in industry, and in banking, and politics, that didn't want to see mankind develop his power. They wanted man to be non-thinking peons, for their machines, and uh, but Keely said, no, we are these powerful spiritual beings, and we can control the forces of nature at will, should we develop a paradigm sufficient to make that work. But concurrent, we have to develop the human side to have the, the, the integrity and the character sufficient to handle these kinds of forces because it's like anything it's a two-edged sword you can use it for bad and you can mm -hmm. use it for good mankind has free will so there's nothing going to hold him back from that so uh, concurrent with the development of, of svp we have to develop a high level of integrity and character um, so that we don't misuse these incredible powers that he was showing us were possible mm -hmm. in our machinery. And I think that was good because of his, I think it was good that his technology got suppressed because if it hadn't been suppressed, people like Hitler and Stalin and a few dozen other egomaniacs would have used it and we, we would not be here today. They would have destroyed the planet. Sure. <clears throat> So that, that whole era of invention kind of goes right along with the New Thought movement that was uh, relevant to the late 1890s and into the early 20th century. That, uh, you know, Russell spoke of the New Thought movement and was very inspired by it. There were uh, you know, giant leaps in industry and things like that, but none of the kind of machinery that Keeley, I think, had hoped to see, but what do you think uh, the application of his work, if w was more studied today and, and brought out a little more, what, what would the implications be and the effects on society with this new kind of machinery? Do you think we're ready for it now, or do you think it, it should be done slowly? Or? I think we're beginning to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you still run into uh, atheistic materialist people all the time. And, of course, they have been raised up to be that, you know, non-thinking, uh, useful idiots for the system to uh, degrade humanity in every way they can conceive of. Um, the introduction of SVP and its philosophical intent follows that original New Thought movement, which was huge in those days. Absolutely. <clears throat> there were a lot of people around the world investigating the mind and the spiritual side of humanity. Mm -hmm so that we could become better humans. Sure. More empowered, you know. Character More development. in control of our lives and our societies. Instead, you know, we were forced to adapt the idea that a few of us, a few of them, 
could control all the rest of us because only a few of them had the intelligence to guide humanity. And, the and look, where, look where it's got us. Right. We had a bunch of egomaniacs, total psychopaths, doing this, suppressing the spirit of God in humans, which is what they did. And Keeley says, no. We've got, and Bloomfield Moore even said, Keeley's science shows not only man reaching for God, but God reaching for man. Beautiful. At the same time. Whereas they didn't want that. You know, they didn't want us having that personal power, mm -hmm. the individual power. And um, so that's been the fight throughout human history is those who wanted to control and those who wanted to be free. And it's never stopped, and it may not ever stop, although they talk about it stopping here soon. But um, we have a science that elevates the human consciousness. Um, it, it asks people to listen within their own being for those creative forces that guide them in their everyday activities. They call it conscience. And that's where we have to go. Some call that the God within reaching for the God within, because that's the source of all the power of Keeley's machines. Mm -hmm. And only until and unless we reach for that and we become whole with that and comfortable on a day-to-day, minute-by-minute basis, we're not going to have these machines. It's not something where you just flip the switch or turn the key on and you got all this horsepower at your fingertips. That's not going to happen with these kinds of machines because they're simply too powerful. And operating on the mind level, you know, there's a possibility of uh, modulation of the new sphere in, in ways, in detrimental ways. So we have to have responsible adults engineering, building, and operating these machines.